blizzard warnings and heavy snowfall warnings still in place all the way from London. Wind chill factored in about minus 40, minus 40. Today I'm out in the woods of Alberta, Canada, where temperatures of minus 30 and minus 40 Celsius are not uncommon during the winter months. Around here we can have up to 17 and a half hours of darkness each day. I'm going to show you a fast and effective shelter to keep you warm in a typical short-term survival situation. In a realistic survival situation, the looks of your shelter and whether it's perfect or not will not matter. I have 20 years experience in hiking in extreme weather. I've hiked in the minus 40s and I've worked 12 hour shifts in the minus 50s. This shelter is a hybrid of a Morse Kohansky and a Raymier's winter shelter. This shelter can be built in two to three hours depending on the materials and tools you have. I built this shelter using a bow saw and a hatchet, but you can make one using debris and deadfall. It's a combination of shelter, fire and heat reflector that make it so effective. Shelters such as a wiki up or log cabin will provide better protection and would be a better long term shelter, but these take an incredible amount of time and materials. This shelter is not meant for primitive living, it's a quick one or two night stay. This lean-to type of shelter will give you almost 200 degrees of protection from wind or snow. But before you build your shelter you want to take wind direction into consideration. You want your wind traveling side to side and not coming directly into the shelter, otherwise you'll be inhaling smoke all night. You also want to build in a good location away from hazardous objects such as leaning trees and if you can build it close to a good source of firewood even better. The key to the shelter is your fire. I have mine prepared. You want it about two and a half feet from your shelter and you want it as long as you are tall to keep you warm from head to toe. Now a fire alone isn't enough. I have here a heat reflector, it's going to help deflect the heat onto me and my shelter. I have my firewood nice and close, I probably need about three times that amount to stay overnight. That pile of firewood not only will help reflect the heat, but will also help block the wind. And one of the benefits of this type of shelter is there's very little wood process processing involved. Your firewood can be six or eight feet long, saving you valuable time and energy. Another key element to the shelter is the raised bed. The warm air is able to circulate and radiate from underneath, keeping me warm. You'll also want a nice thick layer of spruce boughs on top for comfort and to keep you higher off the ground. Above the bed is your ridge pole. I have mine shoulder height, providing room to sit and work under the shelter. If it was only to sleep in, I'd have the ridge pole about a foot or so shorter. You want the ridge pole really secure to hold the weight of the shelter. Behind the bed are the upright vertical logs to provide protection from wind and snow, but also to reflect the heat from the fire towards the bed. You want the uprights nice and tight together. And if you were in a hurry, you could use a tarp or space blanket instead of all those uprights. You might have to improvise. Now the distance between your two trees should be wider than you are tall so you can stretch out. But you might have to do make do with what you can find. This shelter is only five feet across, but I mainly built this just for a hangout. Now for the back of the shelter, I have spruce boughs piled on to further help keep out the snow and wind. You want them to be one to two feet thick if possible. 
You want to lay them down like shingles starting from the bottom to the top. This will help shed any melting snow. You want to rem remember to have the bow down. And if you can trim your boughs close to where you'll be needing them, this will save you a lot of walking. Now this shelter could use a few more spruce boughs, but I don't feel the need to cut down the whole forest for this demonstration. If you have the time, you could pile snow on top of your boughs, giving you more protection from the wind. During our winter months, we can have up to 17 and a half hours of darkness each day, which doesn't leave much daylight to work in. I would suggest collecting firewood and shelter building materials and have them at least close to the area, area that you'll be needing them so you're not wandering off in the dark. Wandering around in the woods in dark is very dangerous. If you can, hold off on lighting your fire. Have it all ready to go, but if you're not cold, maybe hang on and save yourself from wasting firewood. But that would depend on your situation. If this was a real survival situation, I'd be continuing to collect firewood. I'd be melting snow to stay hydrated. As you can see, the shelter is built under a really nice canopy, protecting me from the snow and some wind. And normally, if I was spending the night, I'd have this heat deflector a little bit closer but I don't want to burn it up just for this demonstration. So if you don't have an axe or a saw with you, you can find two trees that are close together like that. 